First, I'll be presenting science. So this year in science, we learned about the three main types of rocks. There's metamorphic rocks, igneous rocks, and sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rocks are made through heat and pressure of other rocks. Sedimentary rocks are made through lithification of sediments. And igneous rocks are made through crystallization of magma and lava. First, we'll go into igneous rocks. So an igneous rock has another name. It's called a magmatic rock. An igneous rock is made from lava and magma. You're probably wondering what the difference is. Magma is stored inside a magma chamber under the volcano inside. The lava is the magma that is spilled out onto the Earth's crust through the top of the volcano. There's two types of igneous rocks, extrusive and intrusive. Extrusive rocks are made from lava. They crystallize on the Earth's surface. Sometimes they harden so fast that they end up trapping little pockets of air and gas in the rock and eventually leave little holes scattered around the rock surface. Next up, intrusive rocks. Intrusive rocks are not much different from extrusive rocks, except for two facts. They're made under the Earth's crust and they're made from magma. Under the Earth's crust, they have the advantage to grow bigger and expand more because they crystallize slower. Crystallization. Igneous rocks have to crystallize to become an igneous rock. Either it's lava or magma, they grow little crystals slowly over time that eventually harden and become bigger, taking over the whole rock, turning it into an igneous rock. Igneous rocks are used for a lot of things. Statues, art pieces, structures, pots, <laughs> a lot of things. But a long time ago in ancient Greece, they used them to build decorative pieces in churches and temples. They embedded pictures and stories into rocks. Next up, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are actually pretty interesting. They start out from another rock, either sedimentary or igneous, and then form under the volcano through heat and pressure. And when the volcano erupts, it releases all of the metamorphic rocks up onto the surface, so they can have a lot of different patterns. This picture here is a rock that has a foilated surface. The foilation are the stripes on the rock. Metamorphic rocks are used for a lot of different sculptures, just like igneous rocks. But not only are they used for decorations, they're used even in toothpaste and paper. Sedimentary rocks. So, sedimentary rocks are broken off bits of other larger rocks. Sand, gravel, you can pretty much find them anywhere. Even salt is a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are made from other rocks, like I had said before, through weathering and erosion. Weathering and erosion is when a rock over time deteriorates. Sedimentary rocks are actually an essential item. They are used for a lot of useful things. Oil, natural gas, bricks, iron ore, cement, concrete. In this photo here, this is a house made up entirely of bricks, also known as sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are my favorite type of rock just because they're exactly like a timeline. Over time, they develop new layers, other rocks that are add-on, layers that are compressed against each other to create one solid rock. Here are some pictures of different rocks mashed together to create one solid sedimentary rock. This rock is the only type of rock that can contain fossils. Preserved fossils. Sedimentary rocks almost always preserve fossils in rather than metamorphic and igneous rocks. The other two types of rocks, igneous and metamorphic, can't preserve fossils just because they acquire heat and pressure that will actually destroy and crust the fossils. Sedimentary rocks don't have the same ability, which leaves it to be much easier and safer for fossils to stay preserved safely. Artifacts tell a story. Artifacts have been around for forever. Anything that has been altered or touched by any creature is considered an artifact. Over time, as creatures evolved, so did their creations. They went from wall cave paintings to extravagant clay pots. 
and now it's a beautiful temple that's built for the gods. Each of these artifacts tell a story only because of the art that was either engraved or painted onto these items. These items show what people long ago believed in stories that they told. The broken off pieces of rocks are called sediments. They're sedimentary rocks, but are usually just called sediments. So magma and lava. There's four main layers of the earth. There's the inner core, the outer core, mantle, and the crust. The crust is the surface. The mantle is closest to the crust. The outer core is the second closest to the center. And the inner core is the center. Tectonic plates. Tectonic plates have another name, a lithospheric plate. The Earth's crust is broken up into many different pieces. These pieces move a few centimeters per year. When they shift, they create what you know to be an earthquake, and sometimes they even create a volcano. This is the end of my science topic. Next, we'll be moving on to my writing topic. So for our writing project this year, we learned about something called the hero's journey. The hero's journey is the process that a character goes through to become a new or improved person, or at least change in some way. It follows the basic guide of almost every story you can think of since ancient Greece. Star Wars, Harry Potter, Willow, Lady and the Tramp, Mary Poppins, they all follow the hero's journey. So for our project this year, we each chose a character from a movie, story, book, and decided to focus on them and go through the hero's journey. So the first part of the hero's journey is the call to adventure. In the movie The Goonies, there's a character named Mikey. He's the character I chose to focus on. The first part of the call to adventure is the ordinary world. Mikey hangs out with his best friends, Data, Mouth, Chunk, and his older brother, Brandon. They all have a large variety of personalities. They live their whole lives in a t small town that they love. That's their ordinary world. The call to adventure. Mikey learns that his neighborhood will be turned into a golf course. Him and his friends have to find a way to stop this. The only way to save their neighborhood was with a certain amount of money, which none of their families have. When Mikey's friends come over one day, they go and explore in Mikey's attic. They find a treasure map. It belongs to One-Eyed Willie. They believe that if they find the treasure, they will have enough money to save their homes. Initiation. In every story, the main character has a person that helps them along the way, a mentor. For Mikey, this was One-Eyed Willie. He was an old pirate that once lived long ago. One-Eyed Willie was their silent mentor who helped guide Mikey and his friends with the pirate map to find his treasure and save their town. Crossing the Threshold. Crossing the Threshold is a point where the group decides whether they should keep searching for the lost treasure instead of turning back. Tests, Allies, and Enemies Every good story has a challenge, someone who helps them, someone who joins the team, and someone who wants to keep them from reaching their goal. In the Goonies, there was a lot of tests, such as the organ playing scene, and the many booby traps along the way. Chunk, one of the Goonies, makes a new friend who's named Sloth, an unlikely ally, who helps the group fight Sloth's crime family, the enemies, who want the treasure for themselves. Transformation. The next part of the hero's journey is the road of trials. These are the tests and trials along the way. Mikey and his friends get ambushed by the Fratellis and have to survive deadly booby traps. The Supreme Ordeal Although there are many trials, the biggest battle occurs when the Fratelli family come and battle Mikey. They come to take the treasure for themselves and have a big battle on the boat. But before the Fratelli family catches up to Mikey and his friends, Mikey, in the treasure room, out of respect and gratitude for the pirate one-eyed Willie, decides not to take from Willie's scale. The scale was actually a booby trap that the, when the Fratelli family caught up to them, triggered, which eventually blew up the whole cave. 
The Hero's Return Growth Over Mikey's adventure, he gained a lot of confidence and was able to save his family and his home from the greedy developers. Now Mikey and his friends can live happily there. The Road Back Mikey and his friends escape the Fratellis in the cave while it collapses. In the end, they are reunited with their families, but without the riches and treasures that they need to save their community and homes. When the greedy developers come to get their contract signed, the maid that worked for Mikey's family finds a bag full of jewels and diamonds, just enough to save their town. The Fratellis are taken to jail by the police, and Sloth gets to live with Chunk. Their neighborhood is saved, and they all get to live their happily ever after. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Do you have any questions?